Our next guest is Parker Harvey. For the past five years, Parker has served as principal economist for the Gulf Coast Workforce Board and Workforce Solutions. He conducts economic studies, regularly communicating with media, local business, and community groups about local labor trends. Prior to his current role, Parker served as Midwest Regional Economist for the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics in Chicago. Parker holds a bachelor's in economics from the University of Texas at Austin, a master's in policy from the London School of Economics, and an MBA from the Thunderbird School of Global Management. Parker, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me from one this morning. It's a pleasure to be here. There's a lot of uh, distinguished guests here on our panel, and it's certainly an honor to be here along with them. So this morning, we're going to take a look at labor market data um, around COVID-19, the early impacts we're able to see from it, kind of give an idea of where we are now and where we might be headed in the not too distant future. So first and foremost, we're going to cover three topics. We're going to look at unemployment rates. We're going to look at UI claims, and we're going to look at job ads, and then we're going to tie it all together. So first up, the unemployment rate for our 13 county region. So let's back up to February because February takes on a certain level of extra importance. It's, it's our last jobs report before COVID-19 really got started. And in all likelihood, it's gonna be the best jobs report we have for this year, unfortunately. So as of February, our unemployment rate sat at 3.9%. Now in March, that rose all the way to 5.1. Now, if you don't follow these numbers carefully, that jump really numerically doesn't seem very large. So it's hard to really get a sense of how important that is. But nonetheless, so let's dig a little bit deeper and see if we can get a better handle on it. Here's, let's put these numbers in historical context. That 5.1% for March actually is below our historical average, which is about 5.5%. So right now, things are still below our long-term trend. Nonetheless, though, obviously things are headed not quite in the right direction. You'll notice a couple other things here too. We actually had a higher unemployment rate back six years ago into the month in March of 2014 when it was 5.3% and oil, believe it or not, was $100 a barrel, which is hard to fathom at this point. Last thing I'll note here as well, during the Great Recession, our unemployment rate never broke 9%. That's gonna be an important number for us to remember in a few slides here. So all in all, in this context, 5.1 doesn't seem that bad, but let's back up again and take a look at um, our numbers from before. So again, 3.9%, that actually translated to 138,000 unemployed individuals in the region as of February. So the jump to 5.1 results in 181,000. So that's a 1.2 percentage point jump as noted. That's an increase of 43,000 additional unemployed individuals. Now, the thing about this, that's a 31% jump, which is pretty substantial. It's actually our largest single one month jump at the unemployment rate on record tied with May of 2009. So even though 5.1% in the grand scheme of things doesn't seem that bad, we're actually already starting to see extremes and having to use superlatives to describe what's going on and March, keep in mind, only really captures the first half of the month. It doesn't capture the point at which we have the stay, in, how, stay at home orders um, implemented at the county as well as state levels. So that's just something to keep in mind here. Now, I'll, one other point out here I want to make here before I move on, I apologize. Um, just as a rule of thumb, each additional one point percentage point increase in unemployment rate is about 36,000 individuals here in our region. So if you're doing trying to keep score at home mentally, that's what that translates to going forward. Now, here's just kind of a look at the unemployment rates around our 13 county region. You can see that the rates tend to be a little bit on the lower side, say 5%, maybe below around there, more towards the north and west, and a bit higher in excess of 5%, more sort of south and east. A couple of things I want to point out here, if you, just as context, what you're seeing here actually is pretty good um, the last few, several years. Nice to meet you too. All right. Um, Matagorda County historically has had our highest unemployment rate in the region over the last 30 years, about 90% of the time. Right now, Liberty actually is ahead of it by just a slight amount, but generally speaking, Matagorda has, and that has been pretty normal for the better part of the history of the region that we have here. Now, Colorado, on the other hand, lowest about half the time over the last 30 years or so. It alternates between Colorado, let's say Fort Bend, occasionally Walker County, et cetera. But by and large, that's where lowest unemployment rates have been geographically around the region. Now, if we look at the cities in our region, we've got 17 for which we have unemployment rate data. Unfortunately, we don't have them for a number of other cities in the, in the region that you might be interested in. These are the ones that are available. I won't go through all of these, but I do want to point out a couple. Baytown over on the east side has historically had the highest unemployment rate amongst the cities in our region about 80 plus percent of the time. And that has to do with the construction industry over there related to the plants and whatnot. 
Other hand, lowest is going to be Pearland about half the time, and it alternates between that. So let's say Sugarland, maybe Friendswood, Texas City, League City. Or, my apologies, League City over the last 30 years as well. So that's just kind of where unemployment rates are. And again, this is pretty consistent with the historical sort of trends we, we've always seen. But we will be looking for all of these to rise significantly here in the next few months. All right. So speaking of which, where might the unemployment rate be headed? given where things are. Well, let's look at unemployment insurance claims that might give us, give us some clues where this is all headed. So here's a look cumulatively at unemployment um, claims week by week by week, going back to the beginning of March. And you'll see that we've got about 356,000 claims cumulatively as of April at the last, most recent numbers that I have available. So let's assume that all 356,000 of those individuals are, are unique individuals applying for unemployment insurance for the first time and, it's, and add that to the unemployment rate or the existing unemployment pool, that translates to essentially an unemployment rate of almost 14%, believe it or not. Now, my hope is that it's actually closer towards maybe 10 or so, which would actually be a win in this case, still high, but certainly better than 14. But that just gives you an idea potentially of what we might be seeing. Even the Federal Reserve has come out this morning talking about rates in excess of maybe 17, even much as maybe 20%. So the rates that we're seeing here for our region would also probably mirror something like that if that happens to, to come to fruition, unfortunately. Now, there is some good news. If we just look at the number of unemployment insurance claims week by week by week, not cumulatively like we just saw before, what we'd find is that for the last three consecutive weeks, we've actually seen a decline week over week in the number of claims. If you look at the national numbers that also came out this morning, I think we've got five consecutive weeks of declining or lower numbers of initial claims out there. So that's a good sign. That means that the peak or the worst surge of it is perhaps behind us, which might have occurred somewhere between late, let's see, March and maybe early, early April. So that is a good sign. That means at least things might be starting to stabilize a bit. That doesn't mean that unemployment rates might not be elevated for a while, but at the very least, so this could very well be a turning point for us. So that is a positive that's come out of the data recently. All right, so a question that I get all the time is, well, who's hiring? And if so, uh, what do we know about them? Well. The only way we can really get at this at this point is to look at job ads because it's as close to real time data as we can really get, even more real time than unemployment insurance claims. So let's take a look here. My apologies, I'm having some technical difficulties. So let's look at unique job ads in the region as of last week. There are, believe it or not, 94,000 active job ads in our Gulf Coast region as of last week. So there is still hiring going on, that is still the case. Nonetheless, though, that is down about 30 plus, almost a third from where it was a year ago this time, which is about down by about 48,000. So we have definitely seen a pullback in the number of active job ads out there that employers have over the last year. So not, not to be unexpected, but that's just to put it in context. So which industries are hiring either more or less as a result of COVID-19? This is another question that I'm frequently getting. Well, if we look at it at a very, very high level, every one of our major industry sectors has seen a withdrawal or pullback of ads from the web over the last two months. And there are really no exceptions here. Some are a little bit more extreme than others. Construction, if you're looking on the left-hand side in the blue bars, that one numerical or percentage terms has seen the largest pull of ads from the web. But if you look at in absolute terms, you'd see admin support, which really what that refers to are the temporary staffing agencies. Obviously, if hiring is not real robust right now, you're gonna see temporary staffing agencies not looking to place people very much right now either. Um, other things you might notice as well, so your professional, scientific, and technical, a lot of that's gonna be supporting oil and gas, obviously with oil below $25 a barrel. There's not gonna be a lot of hiring going on there. Construction, construction is an interesting one. Projects that were already well underway before COVID-19 will likely be finished out. However, new projects that might have otherwise started in the last couple of months will probably be put on hold for a while. Now, after that, you might notice healthcare is one that I think surprises people. You have to think about the fact that a lot of healthcare procedures, treatments, services are actually more elective than they are emergency. So really what's going on out there is there are a lot of people who are either not fully being utilized right now, or in some cases, I'm actually hearing about furloughs. Additional evidence for that as well, if you saw the GDP numbers that came out, I believe last week, they mentioned that healthcare spending was actually the largest drag on GDP in the first quarter. So it really does speak to the fact that not all of healthcare is front lines dealing with COVID. There's actually quite a bit of the workforce that's not being utilized for that purpose and in fact is idle to semi-idle. Now, one other thing I do want to point out too here before I move on to the next slide, 
you almost have to look at individual companies to answer the question who's hiring if you're talking about what sectors people are in. So that's just something else to know. I'm not going to get into that here. We're not going to look at individual companies, but that is something that I've had to start doing in order to be able to get a sense of where things are. Now, this last chart here, there's a lot going on, but here's all you really need to take away from. The higher the blue bars are above that top dotted line, the more disproportionate that you're seeing an increase in job ads for that particular family of occupations. So now we're talking about specific types of jobs and careers. Obviously, you, center left, you see two bars that are sticking up like sore thumbs, and you've got arts, design, entertainment, sports, media. And what that's saying is we're seeing nine times more additional ads out there for jobs in this, this space than you would otherwise expect all else equal. Pretty something, something's pretty similar as well for healthcare practitioners and technical jobs. On the other hand, if you look kind of more towards the far left under computer mathematical, basically what we'll call those IT jobs, you're actually seeing a disproportionate number of those job ads being pulled from the web. So what's really driving this underneath it all? Well, on the arts and entertainment side, you're seeing things like, for example, camera operators, interpreters, translators, writers, authors, photographers, all things around media communications. And what might you imagine is driving this? Well, think about the sheer amount of content that's being generated around COVID-19. The Houston Chronicle alone, based on just a simple count that I did, I found close to 3,500 articles that reference COVID in some way, shape, or form just since the beginning of March. So a lot of content's being generated out there, also for other forms of media as well. So there is a pronounced increase in hiring in that space that we typically haven't seen in the past. Now, for those, for the other portion of it here in the healthcare practitioner, what's interesting is that it's mostly healthcare or, or physician specialists. It's not more of the sort of technical type technicians or technologist type roles. It's mostly physicians and especially physicians at that. Contrast that with healthcare support type roles, which you can see is actually directly to the right of that bar there. And you can see that there's not a lot of movement going on. So not a huge pullback, but not a huge ramp up in hiring either, which is another some, something else I think people might find somewhat surprising. If we look at the computer mathematical where you've seen the pullback, it's, it's pretty broad based. Everything from database administrators to computer programmers, web developers, et cetera, you've, all, you've seen a pullback in the number of job apps at, out there for those types of roles. Now, one thing that's interesting about that is that these are the type of jobs that could be done remotely. Everything else on, a lot of the other things on this list here you pretty much have to do in person, at least to some degree. These can be largely done remotely. So I find it interesting that you're seeing such a strong pullback in the number of job ads out there, which is a proxy for employer sentiment, given what's going on. Now, the possibility of what's driving this, oil and gas. A lot of oil and gas companies contract out these services and this type of work. So if companies are obviously on playing defense right now, oil prices are pretty low, then that may be what's driving this. But it's interesting nonetheless, given the fact that these sorts of jobs are relatively immune from the whole social distancing challenges that are presented right now. Now, so here's just a quick recap of what's been going on, just to kind of tie everything up. March unemployment rate, below average in historical terms, but already starting to show great recession levels of impact. Potential rise in unemployment rate, somewhere between maybe 10, as much as 14% in April, based on initial UI claims since early March, and that will likely surpass the Great Recession highs that we saw that never topped 9%. We do have over 94,000 active job ads out there in the region at present, so there is still some demand for workers out there, but obviously much less than it was, say, a year ago. The job ads do indicate in a pullback in hiring across just about every major sector with any increases being found amongst specific employers. And the increased hiring that we are seeing for specific occupations are limited to media, communications, especially physicians, while IT-type related occupations are seeing a disproportionate pullback at this point. So that's really all I have this morning. I do appreciate your attention. I'd be more than happy to try to answer some questions once we've gotten through all of our speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Parker. And I do have one quick question for you. Are your numbers based on people who are applying for unemployment, or does it include those who are no longer receiving unemployment? This is just based on initial claims. So people who have applied for unemployment for the first time within the last, say, two months now. Awesome. Thanks again. And we will share Parker's slides in our follow-up email um, later this afternoon. All of the presenter slides will be included.